Good morning, everyone. This is Dirk. And first of all, I would like to apologize because for the past five weeks, I have not been uploading any videos. There was a business and a personal reason for that. And I would like to explain this to you. So first of all, business reason, I am in the middle of restructuring my firm. The new website is already developed and everything, the system that's integrated in it is already there. And we are currently working on a solution that buyers worldwide will be able to purchase their Florida residence in Bitcoin. So this is what I'm working on and what me and my team are working on. And so it takes quite some time and efforts to get such things in place. The personal reason, this is week six, I am on a diet and within the first five weeks, I lost about 15 pounds and I got rid of about four inch around my belly great results but the first couple of weeks I felt miserable and I had to adjust my diet accordingly. It is a combination of healthy eating or reduced eating and working out. So um, in order to feel good and to be okay with myself I had to adjust a lot of things and change a lot of things and the first couple of weeks I was not able to be in front of a camera. So these were the two reasons but here I am and now let's talk crypto. The Bitcoin dominance is at 66.4%. So not much has changed right now except for the price. So we are still in this descending channel. And if you take a closer look, we are even in a descending triangle. Now every descending channel will end eventually with a breakout. But so far we are below the 200 day moving average and below our EME ribbon. So these are all very bearish signs. Now, I told you guys that I'm not a day trader, although I keep my eyes on the market, but I am more of a hodler. So I see the long term, the future perspectives of Bitcoin. And that's why I'm not worried at all. I believe and I know that we will reach much different heights in the future. So this is not really concerning to me. In fact, it is a great chance to accumulate more and to get a little bit more into the portfolio. I think we will look back in the days to these times and say, oh my God, why haven't we bought more Bitcoin when it was that cheap? Anyways, um, let's take a closer look. What are the indicators right now? So mixed signals on the daily chart, same as on the weekly and it gets better on the monthly chart but short term actually is developing in the right direction we are at buy and strong buy so now i'm working on a solution to implement bitcoin payments worldwide but i'm not the only one who's working on an implementation and the more people we have who are going to accept bitcoin for international payments the higher the chances are of a success, of a total success of Bitcoin, because Bitcoin is freedom because it's not government regulated. We are in the middle of a financial crisis, but nobody wants to actually admit this. So what causes all these problems where we are right now? Let's take a closer look. So everything started with the Bretton Woods Monetary Conference after World War II where the United Nations were meeting up to find a common solution for the monetary policy as we currently know it. At Bretton Woods, New Hampshire, delegates from 44 allied and associate countries arrived for the opening of the United Nations Monetary and Financial Conference. Zhang Shi Kung, one of China's representatives, with Secretary and Mrs. Henry Morgenthau. United States Treasury Secretary Morgenthau heads the American delegation. On the opening day, in his role of acting conference president, he addresses the meeting. To be discussed are plans for the stabilization of world currencies. 44 countries sent delegates to a conference held in Bretton Woods, New Hampshire, as of the 1st of July, 1944. The U.S., which held two-thirds of the world's gold reserves after the war, was obviously the most influential player, and ultimately, all currencies ended up linked to the dollar, and the dollar was linked to gold. Unfortunately, as good as it may have sounded on paper, the Bretton Woods system didn't survive because the United States kept running deficits to fund various projects, and therefore, the amount of dollars in existence kept increasing while the gold reserves of the U.S. kept shrinking, as more countries demanded gold in exchange for their dollars. 
As such, on the 15th of August, 1971, Nixon officially announced that dollars would no longer be convertible to gold, thereby putting the final nail in the coffin of the Bretton Woods system. Now, and this is still the monetary policy that is current and it is doomed to fail. Um, like Carl correctly mentioned on his tweet, take a look at this chart. So this is the rise of the US national debt, but President Trump is happy to point out that the US stock market is on an all-time high. And what he fails to mention is that it is with borrowed or printed money. Now, Carl has a very good equivalent to that. If I borrow $300,000 to buy a Ferrari, I'll look very rich. And that's the same thing. It's just borrowed, it's not mine. And this is exactly the crisis and the problem that we're in. And this is why the current monetary policy worldwide is about to fail. And we are seeing already breakoffs from this current monetary policy. Now, China is working tremendously fast on a solution and they want to implement within the next 18 months their own launch of a state-backed digital currency. Russia is working on a solution of a state-backed digital ruble. Uh, Sweden is working on it. Um, as much as I know, there are oh, here with you. Here we go. Senegal and uh, the Marshall Islands, they have already a digital state-backed currency. And so a lot of other countries are going to uh, have their own state-backed digital currencies. And why they do this is because it is so much simpler for international trades and to cut loose from the dollar dominance. And this is what we're currently seeing. Uh, the countries all over the world, they want to cut loose from the dollar and the crisis is just about to begin here in the United States and globally. So that's why it is great that we have our Bitcoin. We all know that the Bitcoin halving is coming in May next year. So that means the supply will decrease and that means automatically that the price will increase. There are only 2.9 million Bitcoin left to be produced within the next 120 years. They're not produced yet. So the circulating supply is about 18 millions of which 4 million Bitcoin were lost within the first years. So let's say we have 14 million Bitcoins circulating supply for over 8 billion people. The majority of the circulating supply is already distributed and the people are hodling and not many people are actually spending this. Of course, the Lightning Network is going to change this and we will see more Bitcoin transactions. We will see an increase in demand in Bitcoin and an increase in price in the future. So that was my five Satoshi of the day. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your Sunday. Thanks for joining in and see you soon again. Bye and peace.